Uh, so we thought we'd do an um, impromptu interview. Uh, we'll kind of pass the one year mark on uh, Sylvie fasting every other day, but training at an intense level. And for those who don't follow her, fighting more than probably any uh, person on the planet. Fights 30 times a year, has been doing so for seven years in Thailand. But it's the last year where you've been fasting every other day and what we call one plus one keto, which is uh, when you do eat, you're eating ketogenically. Um, for those that don't follow what keto is, it's cutting out all carbs and getting your body to burn fats instead of um, looking for sugars, right? So you made the change actually to, for mental stability reasons, right? To avoid dipping down too far into depression and yeah, so I'd, low feelings. I'd heard or read a little bit about keto um, and the things that I did read, um, the things that were interesting to me were one, how quickly it made changes and two, that it was um, a mental change. So in approaching it from wanting more mental stability, because I'm an athlete, the thing that was uh, a potential trade-off to consider um, was that it might cause energy changes. Um, I'm a very high <laughs> intensity athlete. What do you mean by energy? You just mean like your sense of uh, vigor, maybe, uh, or endurance? Endurance, I think, mainly is, is what I was concerned about. Um, but the, the mental stability was so important that I was willing to have that trade-off. And then I was actually pretty surprised when I went keto, I had no difference in um, energy at all. Like, no notable you told me difference. even that you feel better sometimes in terms of energy on your fasting days. I think so. Not not uniformly so, but because every day is up yeah. And down. But I was I was actually talking about just going keto. So then going from keto to every other day fasting, um, there there was even more. Wow, there's no difference between not eating at all on a day um, that I'm training full. Like I don't change my training on fasting days at all. Uh, so. For lots of people who've had experiments, oh, we're gonna have an announcement truck coming by. Um, for people who have experience experimenting with diet and not eating or eating low calories, we, a lot of them would think it's impossible to train at a high, high intensity world-class athlete level not eating like yeah people I, I fight fasted as well and people are like that's you can't do that you can't fight fasted. <laughs> I'm like I train fasted it's not a problem I actually kind of prefer it so this is one of the interesting parts about what you've done is that a big reason why you did this or a part of why you did this was like you really don't like reading people telling other people what to do yeah, you're like <laughs> you're like experiment for yourself yes. see for yourself what it's like. Can you maybe talk a little bit about the spirit of experimentation that this involves? And now this has been a whole year of experimentation, so. Um, I, I like that if you're doing keto properly, um, it is you are a test kitchen of one mm. and you're constantly checking things. Mm. Um, so you can take gauges off of other people. So for someone else, they can go up to 50 carbs a day and be okay, maybe for you not so much, but you check it, like you test it. Mm. Um, and I really like that the spirit of keto is self-experimentation and like that each person is very unique because I think that's true in what your capacity is for training and what kind of fighter you are and all of those things. So I think it actually uh, ethically graphs onto how I see being a fighter as well. So it's kind of interesting was if you went keto first yeah. as an experimentation, like let me see how this affects my mood, mm -hmm. and it took you out of your deeper uh, emotional valleys, mm -hmm. right? Leveled your energy, which was really good, promoted endurance energy. Let, both physically and mentally it took this out. The ups and downs. <laughs> it just kind of became a little bit more. Yeah. And then, uh, a year ago, you're like, I'm gonna experiment further and just start fasting every other day. And we're talking about full fast, like coffee is the only thing, right? Black coffee. Black yeah. coffee, water. And so you're kind of fasting for 36 hours, right? Mm -hmm. you're, there's the night sleep and then the whole day. Yeah, and then I don't eat again until after training, so it's 
That's a pretty big window. So, what is that? Well, one second while we have a motorcycle moving by. This is the joy of uh, interviewing in Thailand. It's <laughs> full of life everywhere. Um, so what is that like emotionally on your fasting days? You were like, you've told me in, that not thinking about food is a relief in a strange way. Yeah. What are fasting days like for you? There's a lot of mental tension and stress that people maybe aren't even aware of because you do it every day around eating. That's like, where am I gonna eat? What am I gonna eat? Did I eat too close to training? Did I eat not close enough to training? All of these things that when you take that out entirely, it's just like you don't have to worry about it. And so it, it's, it's a little bit the similar argument of people being like, I like uniforms because I don't have to think so much about what I'm gonna wear. And I'm sure. like, not everyone cares what they wear. So for some people that's a stress relief and for some people it's not. For me, it's a stress relief to not worry about, uh, I'm in a city I've never been in before. I fight at 10.30, when should I eat kind of thing. I like not thinking about that. And because I went keto first, um, and then started doing the one plus one alternate day fasting, um, there was not a huge change in my energy for those fasting days, so it was only a relief. Now, one of the interesting things about this also is you also, as a fighter, are a cardio monster. You're known as, for your energy. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like you fight in some other way. You're known as an energy fighter, and also in the gym, you're a fucking gym rat. Like, you out-train the gym often like the entire gym. So we're talking about really high expenditures. And also in Thailand, it's very high heat uh, often. So you get almost like this. I always wonder if there's like a heat shock protein uh, uh, kind of thing, like <laughs> training in a sauna because the heat is really high <laughs> yeah. in Thailand sometimes, yeah. right? So you're training at a really high level, you're fighting fasted and um, you're training in heat. Mm -hmm. And none of it happens, none of it gives you a blink of the eye, which is kind of, it's still, I'm here for a whole year, it's kind of crazy to me. How does it feel to you? Does it feel like it's miraculous? Like you found, like, wow, you can breathe underwater. Uh, in the same way that we were talking about um, keto's ethic being like a test kitchen of one, no, because I, I know I'm not like anyone else at the gym already. So to mm. be more not like anyone else at the gym is not a huge deal to me. Mm. Um, I loved this story you told me, because I haven't read it yet, but a guy was talking about training up in Chiang Mai and refusing rice because he's keto and his trainer started getting really concerned that he's not eating rice. And finally he was just like, you know, Sylvie, same, same. <laughs> so it's like the, the proof is me. Yeah. Like, I, I don't have to explain to people, it's okay, I still have energy. They can see I still have energy. Like, P. News joke, and he's not kidding, whenever someone's like, uh, is Sylvie tired? He's like, Sylvie's never tired. Like, even if I'm very clearly tired, he's like, no, Sylvie doesn't get tired. Like, and a, a lot of Thai training is about pushing you to the envelope of your fatigue, mm -hmm. like, and, and pushing for recovery, recovery, yeah. recovery. And to be clear, I do get tired, but it is not a like, oh, I didn't have the right macros and so I'm tired. It's just you get tired training the way I do. So. Now we should say there is one struggle in this which is because you train in heat and probably even if you weren't training in heat, electrolytes is a big part of this. Like yes. you, in, a, in a ketogenic diet it's hard to get certain electrolytes because like you can't eat five bananas, mm -hmm. you can't eat any bananas. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to get potassium, sodium and magnesium just from a ketogenic diet every other day. Yeah. And when you're hitting the gym on your fasting day, you're shedding huge amounts of electrolytes. Yes. So one of the things, the challenges you faced is how do you keep your electrolytes up? And how do you keep your electrolytes up? I s create my own supplements. I don't take like prepackaged um, electrolytes, but um, I literally just take table salt, like salt and hot water. Um, I use cream of tartar as my potassium for the most part. Mm. There are carbs in that, so um, you need to work that into your plan. Um, and then I should be taking a magnesium supplement that I often don't because it upsets my stomach. And so I use a magnesium spray, it's magnesium oil. Yeah. So you put it on your skin instead of eating it. Um, I have a sensitive stomach and you don't. So I have a really hard time if I take too much electrolytes at well, once. Salt especially, right? Potassium too. Yeah. It's uh, the salt and potassium I have to like microdose in order to. And even in microdosing, you 
end up going through some gastric distress yeah. ev pretty much every day. It's rough. Like, so <laughs> this is not like a, a, the most like fun diet Terry approach yeah. ever, right? There is some distress that you're going through every day. But again, you don't have it, so it's not for everybody. It's this kind of thing well, where you I have to I like, also don't train like crazy. I it like, doesn't I matter. It's the response to yeah. the thing itself. So you have to, again, um, experiment for yourself how much you can take and how much you need and that kind of thing. Like, I can write down what I take, but that doesn't mean that's what you should take. So, so wow. You started fighting at a lower weight. You're already a very small fighter, but when you went on this diet, you started going, you also started adding sodium mm -hmm. to help with your mental clarity. Mm -hmm. So you were adding sodium to make sure you had the right amount of electrolytes, but then you started pushing your sodium also. And then I was like, oh wow, the anxiety went down. <laughs> yeah, so you had a mental clarity jump yeah. with- With sodium. Well, yeah, don't just say yeah, mm -hmm. like there's a conversation, right? Yeah, with sodium made a big difference unexpectedly in further um, improving my mental clarity and relaxation. So you're kind of high sodium, mm -hmm. fasting every other day, ketogenic, world-class athlete. Mm. That is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. What, how do you feel on the long term about how it's affected your depression? Because that was originally those lows, those emotional lows was really, you're like, I cannot be bottoming out like that. Um, I think it's made a really huge difference in the long term and overall. I think it's similar to anything you do where like when you make a big change, there's a big change at the beginning and then you get used to whatever the thing is. So it's not that it's not working anymore. I still have lows and mm. I still, get depressed for no reason. I still uh, have the same mental problems, but they're just not as heavy. It's like the the gutter is not as like dug out as it used to be. It's kind of got this lining to it now. Um, so I won't say that it was like a quick fix that lasted forever and I just don't uh, have those highs and lows anymore. I still do, but they're just not as peaked and valued as they used to be. Mm. Um, and I think that the diet makes it much easier to because it's not so deep, the valleys, it's easier to kind of like pull out of them. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the peaks not being so high, uh, you don't like roller coaster down as hard. Mm. And there's, a, there's another uh, line of talk about keto and athletics and fighting, maybe even sometimes people are like, you cannot go ketogenic because you lack that. The glycogen the, stores. The glycogen <laughs> stores for the explosive movements and fighting. And, uh -huh. We've talked a lot about this between the two of us. We, maybe me more than you even, I think that people misunderstand really how fighters usually fight. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not exploding video game style across the ring over and over again. As a matter of fact, the best fighters fight below burn. Yeah. They're, they, they're persistence hunters more than they are explosive cats jumping out of the jungle mm -hmm. on a, on prey, yeah. right? Would you say that? And Thailand's fighting is actually much more like that as well. So your diet, it seems, is conducive to the kinds of fighting style that you're pursuing, which is a really interesting side path in this. Yeah, it makes sense. It's like a kind of, um uh, ecology, like I don't know that I would have come to this if mm. I was fighting in a different style or if I were not a knee fighter or any of those things. Um, but it um, it has not ever gone in a direction where I'm like I can't do that anymore. Like it's always been kind of like this is good in fights. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like if I see you breathing even a little bit heavy, I'm like wow that's rare. My last fight uh, that was the last was, first time in a long was time. Was the most tired I've been in a fight in a long time, um, and it was not a like I cannot get through this round kind of thing at all. It was just a like wow I'm tired. And, <laughs> like, let's and acknowledge you were, that. And the, your fighting style is a forward pressing knee fighting style with lots of clinch, which means a lot of like my burning. opponents get tired for sure. Yeah. 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 It's <laughs> not like you're dancing around taking it easy, right? No. Yeah. Okay, so that was a pretty good one year review, what, how do you see the future uh, in your diet? Are you kind of happy with where you're at right now? I'm pretty happy where I'm at right now. It's, uh, 
it's easier and harder during different times of the month in my cycle. My hormones definitely affect, um, like my, for a while I was tracking my um, glucose with a blood glucose meter. Um, and I can see that my glucose just goes up with hormones uh, when you're closer to your cycle. So when I'm on my period, I'm fucking hungry on my fasting days a lot. Oh, that's actually a good thing. Which makes it harder. Well, but it when also you're, when keeps you're, my mood stable. When so. your glucose isn't spiking, like at other times of the month, you you actually don't feel hungry on your fasting days. Totally. I, like it's like totally. You, it's like I don't care. Like I just yeah. you're not even thinking about food. It's yeah. the last thing on your mind. Yeah. But then when your glucose spikes at that time of the month, very hungry. You yeah. start having like what what is it like five days of you can feel hungry on the fasting maybe day? maybe three three days uh, like leading up to my period. But it's like. I feel like even if I was eating on that day, I'd be really hungry. Like it yeah, doesn't it's, matter. <laughs> like it's it wouldn't make a difference. And it's almost like um, having hunger as a human experience. Like that's a part of the spectrum of being a human being. So having a yeah. little bit of a hunger feeling. Yeah. I think the main difference, rather than like, because it actually doesn't affect my energy. Like having mm. my glucose spike and being hungry and not eating does not make me tired. Um, instead, it's just an annoying mental thing of like not being able to have something that you want, where you're like, ah, now I'm now I'm like craving or something. Um, abstaining, whereas uh, the rest of the time it doesn't really feel like that. Okay, that was really good. <laughs> If you have any questions, we have a ketogenic area in the roundtable form. We'll link that in the um, notes, in the notes uh, to this. Um, there's articles Sylvia's written, other uh, vlogs she's done on her diet so that you can check out. Um, and, if, and you can have questions, you can answer, ask them there and Sylvia will answer them. Yes. I'll make sure you answer them. <laughs> okay.